how have you been? I hope you have been well. I have been well. I bless the Lord. Um, I know I've been gone for a while. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's just say after the last video that I posted, a lot has happened. Um, I talked about demonic oppression. Let's just say spiritual flow was real after that. But um, yeah, we are overcomers. So here I am today. Um, I'm going to post a link below that talks about. Um, or rather on a summon series that was done at ICC Mombasa that talks about demonic oppression just so that you can be able to be normal, you know, just not be ignorant about these things um, whether you're a Christian or not, I think it's stuff that you need to hear anyway, so today I'm talking about something that a friend of mine asked me to share and that is on addiction so do you have those? <laughs> do, do you have those because I do I actually uh, no sorry did I just say I do no I did <laughs> it's more like it um, and very specifically um, I just like to go straight in and so allow me to read the scriptures because I mean all things come from that now Romans um, so allow me to open my Bible Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord um, let me take you back to a scripture that I've highlighted in the first I told you guys how when I first met a people who knew the word of God and or rather who knew um, what it is that they're talking about with regards to their faith and their Christianity and very specifically and and the scriptures that he taught from that caught my attention which was Galatians chapter 5 um, verse 19 all the way to verse um, 21 so allow me to read that it says the acts of sinful of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry and witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage self-ambition dissension factions and the envy drunkenness orgies um and the like i warn you as i did before that those who like who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of god so i want to highlight one oh two maybe three <laughs> but just basically talk about something and um i remember when i was younger one of the things that we like to say is what's your vice you know like what's your vice and you, you guys are probably talking about the same thing right now like what's that thing that's got you hooked you know because apparently we all need to have a thorn in the flesh just so you know that thorn in the flesh business was not a teen sinful nature I, I i i i don't think god would let you stay and and i don't i'll explain that in a bit but um debauchery i want to use the word debauchery now debauchery uh, means excessive indulgence in sex alcohol or drugs sounds familiar <laughs> I know, I know, and similar words to the word debauchery a dissipation, a degeneracy, corruption, a vice, depravity, immodesty, indecency, perversion, iniquity, immorality, indulgence, self indulgence, and pleasure seeking. We live in a generation where those are what we pursue. Now, I bless the Lord that I have had and have met a people that of a younger generation than I am in and um, I happen to have been a millennial um, who do not believe in pleasure seeking why because they have looked at our lives and they're like man if that's what that's about then I don't want any of it and I and I and I'm grateful that that's happening but then we still have a people who are so lost in the same now let me talk about debauchery and we said from romans the wages of sin is death now this death is not necessarily like and you're gone you know exit left kind of business no you know this is actually 
you know when you have indulged and I don't know about the guys let me speak for the women let me speak for myself rather after you have been with one guy after the other 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 and I can keep going on after the other and you you sort of like lose meaning of thyself I remember it was in 2011 and I had just gotten to my ends with and mind you um, I'm talking about self-indulgence within the span of 2008 and 2011 that got me to a place where I had no self-esteem yes I was still that person who walks into the room and you'd think that oh this woman has okay that time it was this young girl <laughs> has a, so much confidence but the truth of the matter is I wore a lot of that to try and cover just how faded I was inside because I had I had lost me I was dead um, for lack of a better way to express just how I felt about myself and I was done simply put I was done now uh, let me read the scriptures that come just before uh, the wages of death is sin and that was from John sorry not from John um, Romans chapter 6 um, it says I put this Paul writing to the Romans from verse 19 it says I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and ever increasing wickedness so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness what benefit did you reap at that time from all the things you are now ashamed of those things result in death um when i was doing anchor as a program that uh, the discipleship program that happens um at the church where i have the privilege of teaching um the same program i remember having come to the end of the scene and this was in 2013 in april and sitting down and we'd been asked to um take some time and just do quiet time and i did I, I did not understand quite time much but um, what happened is we were told to find a spot sit quietly and write every thought that came through your mind now um, before I read that scripture I'm gonna say something so once you once you want once you desire or have chosen to pursue a different life once you call upon the name of the lord and you say you know what lord come into my life like i confessed last week um i had an encounter with jesus christ and i was like i want this jesus i want to know this jesus i want to live my life to bring him glory and i had come to the end of anchor and i sat there and i could not help but think of all the shameful things i have indulged in or had indulged in and all the shameful things I was still indulging in now I said I was going to talk about addiction now here's the thing this body of ours this 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 flesh this I can keep slapping myself because this body has got no shame when you allow your bodies to control you and the desires that your body have the lust of this flesh my friend you will do things that you will look back at yourself and you will be ashamed let me use an example how many of you openly go around telling people i masturbate interesting i know many who don't why because it's shameful but if it's shameful then why do we continue to indulge in it because of this flesh because this flesh has a hormone a sex hormone that once triggered that's it I mean the Bible says do not awaken love before it's time and that that's in the book of um, songs of Solomon you know um, 
and 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 that's what I had done. I had to awaken love before it's time. And so I found myself um, not only indulging in sex with multiple people and not uh, not only masturbating, but I was addicted to pornography. I indulged in debauchery, or rather, let me tell you, I was not I was not one who drank alcohol because I wanted to. By the way, I. I would not go and buy myself a drink and sit in the house and drink. No, 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 no. Alcohol was an excuse to misbehave. Like, if I'm tipsy, then I can get away with whatever it is that I do. But the truth of the matter is, you wake up tomorrow morning sober with a banging headache and you ask yourself, That's not a life that we want to live. I, it has taken time for the Lord to heal me and to deal with a lot of things in my heart and in my life for me to be able to come to this place where I can actually sit here and confess some of the things that I have indulged in. Um, but here's the thing, Paul writes to us and he says, um, just because, just because we have, we, you know, we are controlled by our natural selves. Does it mean that then we continue to be slaves to this flesh? No, he actually says, and um, he says that what we need to do is to desire to be of the spirit. And he writes this in the book of Galatians. Just allow me to open that and read. Um, He says, uh, do not be see. <laughs> sorry. He says, do not be deceived. And this is in Galatians 6 from verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be moved. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become wary of doing good. For at a proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now, here's the thing. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, some of these things didn't just leave. I didn't just wake up one morning and I was like, I'm free. No, no, no. It took time before I stopped masturbating. It took time before I stopped watching pornography. Well, I was already married. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, um, sex from that perspective was not a vice. And I bless the Lord that I... I was beginning to learn the sanctity of sex and just how beautiful sex is um, and, and very specifically sex as a form of worship unto the Lord and it's only a worship unto the Lord if it's done between a man and a woman who are married in holy matrimony and so for me that at least was a relief but I was struggling with these other things and it shamed me, it bothered me and I believe that that was just the Holy Spirit unctioning me to stop. And I remember crying to the Lord countless times and, and, and like I said, this was something that a few of my friends have asked me to and, and the question was, what do you do when you just can't stop? And you know what man says? Keep crying unto the Lord and run away from it as much as you can. I mean, every time you have the urge to indulge in something that you know is not good for your body, that is not good for your health, that is not good for your mental health, run away from it flee you know it says resist uh, the devil and he will flee from you and everything sinful is exactly that here's the thing the bible and the book of john says that the enemy who's the devil came to steal kill and destroy and he will do that with anything or every opportunity that he gets and that's from the things that i mentioned from um galatians chapter 5 verse 19 it may be orgies it may be drunkenness it may be um debauchery like myself it may be the sexual immorality again like myself it can be anything but he's going to try and tie you down all right and so my encouragement is to call upon the Lord because our God is faithful to answer us. He's what? Faithful to answer us. He's what? Faithful. <laughs> I can't say that enough. Um, John um, chapter 3 verse 36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. 
for God's wrath remains on him. And when God's wrath remains on you, the enemy continues to plunder you, continues to steal from you, he continues to um, have opportunities to destroy your life and just make you nothing, whereas you are created to be something, you are created to be more than something, you are created to be, yeah, so let me just go to Isaiah because um, if I keep going, I, I will not end this and I need to end this. So allow me to read the scripture from Isaiah 61. Um, and uh, sorry, I closed it in the middle of my clipping through my Bible. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those sorry and provide for those who grieve in zion to bestow to them a crown of beauty instead of ashes um the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord for the display of his splendor i told you guys many of you look at me and you see a butterfly um before this butterfly showed up there was lava and there was pupa and there was there was a woman that was broken beyond description but jesus christ actually read the scripture you know um in the temple courts and he said the spirit of the sovereign lord was upon him and that is what he came he came to tell us or let us know that the kingdom of god is here with us and this kingdom of god allows us to walk in freedom i know that there are days you don't you can't even look at yourself in the mirror because you see you are ashamed of the things that you have indulged in and then because the enemy comes to steal and destroy what does he do he makes you want to do more things so you can be able to cover the shades and you think that if you keep covering the shades that eventually you will not recognize the shame but my friend it only gets clearer and what am i saying you can be free I cannot remember the last time I masturbated. I walk in freedom. I can't. In fact, if you put a movie and it has pornographic scenes or scenes of sex or sexual nature, I literally want to switch off the television or walk away because the Lord redeemed me from it. I, I just can't. And I, and I know for you, whatever it is, whether it be smoking a cigarette, I'll tell you guys a story about how I stopped, stopped smoking cigarettes and anything that you can smoke, weed, um, shisha, the works, how it is that I actually came to that place where I stopped. But um, for today, all I was saying was this, you can find freedom. Now, if you're there and you're saying, you know what, you've struggled and you've been wondering what it is that you need to do, um, I know what you need to do. You need to call upon the name that is above every other name. He who is reason and is seated on the right hand side of God. Um, which reminds me, there's a scripture that I needed to read for us. And, and, and I'll surely close. I'll actually pray for you after this. Um, it's in the book of uh, Romans. Oh, sorry, every time I read a scripture, I actually close the Bible. But um, uh, um, right here in Romans chapter six, um, Paul begins by saying, "What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase?" Or in another scripture, it says, or in another uh, translation, it says that 
see me abound um, and he goes on to talk about how we were crucified with Christ and it is no longer we that live but Christ who lives within us and and very specifically I want to read verse 11 and 12 which says in the same way count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires so let's run let's run let's not let ourselves be held because this flesh wants something that is going to ruin our health ruin our mental um you know our mental states um bruise our hearts in ways we cannot mend and and just affect the relationships our relationship not just with people around us but even our relationship with god um if you're there and you say you know what maria maybe i need this jesus um go right ahead and and and, and make this prayer with me lord jesus I come before you with thanksgiving in my heart. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. And right now I confess that indeed that I am a sinner. And I ask Lord that you may come into my life, that you may change me, that you may indeed um, take this, that this broken self that is me and turn it into beauty because what is here is ashes. And, and I pray that you will come into my life and be Lord. Come save me because that is what you died on the cross to do, to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I allow you into my life that you may come and lead me um, onto the path that leads to eternity or eternal life. And if you're there and you say, you know what, I've been struggling with addictions and I just want to be free, um, let me pray for you. Um, Lord Jesus, we thank you also for this wonderful opportunity to have been able to fellowship with one another. We know, dear Lord, that it is so easy for us to please this flesh and not seek to please the spirit. And I pray, my Lord, that every time that we have been convicted, every time we have felt ashamed, that was just you saying, you know, that that is a there is a better way to live our lives and we ask Lord that you will help us walk away from all those things that have held us back be it consumption of alcohol that has led us led us down the path of drunkenness that has led you down the path of debauchery Lord I know that you have seen the struggle and I know that you are well able to set us free because that is what you came to proclaim freedom for each and every one of us and so i pray lord for each and everyone who's watching and 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 i know lord that they desire to be set free may you do it for them may you do a new work in them my lord and also for those who have been born again and have been living this life life of in pursuit of righteousness but are still or have still been struggling with these things i know lord that you or god can finally put a stop to it all and yes lord we O oh god are your workmanship and you say that any work that you begin that you always bring to accomplishment or to fulfillment and so i pray may you do it for us and we have prayed all these things believing and trusting in jesus name amen thank you so much for being here if you think or you believe that this is a message that would minister to somebody else feel free to share it or rather i encourage you to share this so that more can be able to take this journey with us and know that there is indeed freedom in christ jesus i love you guys and i look forward to seeing you again next time god bless you bye